This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 3, this is the last and final section of Section 5, Lesson 136 and the Purpose of Body, Part 2. The body is a concretized form of fear. But so is a snowflake, a tree, a couch, and a rug. In other words, when they have been rested from the whole, there is an ordering that has to take place, that is denying their unreality. Reality is purely abstract. Once the mind believes that separation is possible, once perception is believed to be real, then abstract reality is denied. Now whatever the mind perceives as separate, as a whole within itself, is literally an attack upon reality. Friend, It still seems a little abstract. I'm not sure I am bringing it down to a practical level. David Most people would not think of watching your mind and just holding on to this abstract intent and holding peace as your only goal, as a very practical thing. But actually... That is very practical. Friend For me, I have to go back to what the Course says about believing all of it or none of it. I choose to believe that I am in heaven with God and that I do not even have to wonder that I believe a snowflake is separate. That does not even come into mind. I prefer to believe that I am in heaven with God and I am supposed to be here to be of help. That is what I go back to. David I am in heaven with God and I am a child of God, our high experiences. It is important not to try to skip steps. When we come together in groups, We do not start with the fact that I am a son of God. We really look at the specifics. We have to look at where there is upset or annoyance. These last couple of paragraphs give us the metaphysics of what it is that is going on, of how separate things are made up in the deceived mind. The value of this is that I want to be very vigilant and very clear that I do not still buy into the belief that I can attack God, even in subtle ways. If there are subtle things that are attacks on God that I do not know about, that I do not see as attacks on God, I need to know about them. Friend. And when I say a practical level, what I mean is that the logic of this is lost on me when I'm upset. It even says here, part of doing this is that we forget we have done it. And so for me to go back and trace this when I'm feeling upset takes a real understanding of it because I have already deliberately forgotten what I did. It is a deliberate decision that is built into the ego system. David Yes, these are unconscious beliefs. Like with the roles we play of mother, father, wife, husband, you can be in a situation 
and click into the autopilot of being in a role. All these roles are pulled out of the hole as well. If I have been used to cruising along on autopilot, defining myself as that role, then it takes a real vigilance and awareness to go back and make those connections. It seems abstract in the beginning, but we can train our minds to think this way. I remember watching fireworks a couple of summers ago by the Ohio River. Afterwards, people asked what I thought of the show. I said, Well, I was doing my mind watching during the show. They said, Even with the fireworks and all the spectacular explosions of colors and sounds and heights? I remember just telling them that honestly, that was not what I was doing during all of it. I was just holding on to my purpose. It was not a strain. It was not like I was forcing myself to do this tedious thing during the fireworks display. It was a part of a natural flow of everything, of being there and holding on to that purpose with everything I was seeing. It was not like a separate thing. Some say, what is the point? Where is the enjoyment in that? The enjoyment or the entertainment does not come from the fireworks or the songs the band played that night or the bungee jumper that was splashing in the river there. It has everything to do with holding on to my intention and just feeling very much in the flow. It has nothing to do with any of that other stuff. But it has taken an effort to align my thinking that way. That is certainly not the way I have experienced other 4th of July celebrations. With this next paragraph, we get into what is going on in the mind. Why would the mind choose sickness? Sickness is a decision. It is not a thing that happens to you, quite unsought, which makes you weak and brings you suffering. It is a choice you make, a plan you lay, when for an instant truth arises in your own deluded mind and all your world appears to totter and prepare to fall. Now are you sick? That truth may go away and threaten your establishments no more. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 7 Often people will ask the Holy Spirit to help them see symptoms of sickness differently and nothing happens. But sickness is of the mind. It is not about trying to deal with sickness per se, at the symptom level. Trying to address it at the symptom level is saying that it has reality. I really do get these migraines every month. It is going on a witch hunt to say that and then look for a specific mind change or a specific belief when what really has to be let go of is the whole world as it is constructed backwards with outer things being seen as causative. It is the self-concept that is holding on to that. That is what is sick. The sickness is the mind that believes it is a self-concept of its own, constructing reality in a way that it wants it to be. It has nothing to do with migraine headaches, flu symptoms, cancer, rashes or hives. Friend, 
So what I hear you saying is not to wait until there are bodily symptoms. Pay attention to what is going on in the mind. There is no quick fix. David Yes, the whole message of the Course is, do not wait. In other words, salvation is offered to you this instant. Be vigilant. Watch your mind. Be as attentive as you can this very instant. And the Course does not give specifics. Like if this arises, do that. It is all based on sorting out the two thinking systems. The right mind and the wrong mind. That is where healing takes place. It draws attention away from symptom levels. Whether it be a financial problem, health issues or whatever. How do you think that sickness can succeed in shielding you from truth? Because it proves the body is not separate from you. So you must be separate from the truth. You suffer pain because the body does. And in this pain are you made one with it. Thus is your true identity preserved. And the strange, haunting thought that you might be something beyond this little pile of dust, silenced and stilled. For see, this dust can make you suffer, twist your limbs and stop your heart, commanding you to die and cease to be. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 8 There we have the ultimate of the reversal of cause and effect. The deceived mind wants to be sick. It wants to experience and interpret sickness as being of the body so it can prove that it is separate from God. It is vulnerable. It is guilty. It is a strong witness to have a throbbing headache or sharp back pain etc. As long as pain is being experienced, it is seen as a strong witness. It is a decision. You think it is serving you in some way. As soon as you can see how it does not serve, it will be gone instantaneously. Friend, And the only way it serves me is to help me keep my concept of the world in place? That could be the only purpose that it serves. David And the Course is teaching how insane, how ridiculous that is. Thus is the body stronger than the truth, which asks you to live, but cannot overcome your choice to die. And so the body is more powerful than everlasting life, heaven more frail than hell, and God's design for the salvation of his Son opposed by a decision stronger than his will. His Son is dust, the Father incomplete, and chaos sits in triumph on his throne. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 9 That is quite graphically laid out. Once again, you need to trace it back and see it for what it is. Feeling a little bit cold or a little too hot. Feeling an itch or anxiety or a nervous twitch. All of that is simply a decision. A defense that is being made against heaven. Even the more subtle things. Do not say in a personal sense, 
Oh my gosh, but I still have an itch. Or, I still feel too hot or cold. But use it to bring to your attention how vigilant you have to be. Your mind watching has to be totally free of this backward thinking to let the light shine on all the false thoughts in your mind. Such is your planning for your own defense. And you believe that heaven quills before such mad attacks as these. With God made blind by your illusions, truth turned into lies, and all the universe made slave to laws which your defenses would impose on it. Yet who believes illusions but the one who made them up? Who else can see them and react to them as if they were the truth? God knows not of your plans to change His will. The universe remains unheeding of the laws by which you thought to govern it. And heaven has not bowed to hell, nor life to death. You can but choose to think you die or suffer sickness, or distort the truth in any way. What is created is apart from all of this. Defenses are plans to defeat what cannot be attacked. What is unalterable cannot change. And what is totally sinless cannot sin. Workbook Lesson 136, Paras 10 and 11 Let's look at the subtleties of this. Whenever there is concern for the body, concern about where I will get food to eat or where I will sleep, or how I will get all the work done that I have to do, it is always related to the body. And the mind is defending the self-concept. What a relief to see that it is not necessary. It flies in the face of everything in the world to think that you can just hold on to your purpose and everything will click and flow in absolute perfect harmony. But that is what the lessons are teaching us. If this is absolutely practiced, then the mind will become so detached of judging anything that it literally just lets go of all preferences and all judgment thoughts. Healing will flash across your open mind as peace and truth arises to take the place of war in vain imaginings. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 6 The mind that believes in war and vain imaginings is a darkened mind. That is what is sick. Healing or light will flash across an open mind. There will be no dark corners sickness can conceal and keep defended from the light of truth. There will be no dim figures from your dreams nor their obscure and meaningless pursuits with double purposes insanely sought, remaining in your mind. It will be healed of all the sickly wishes that it tried to authorize the body to obey. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 16 In the next paragraph, he uses a metaphor. Now is the body healed because the source of sickness has been opened to relief. That obviously has to be a metaphor because he told us many times that the body cannot be sick. There is an assumption here of a concept that a body can be sick. 
In a sense, he is saying that when the mind is healed, the body will reflect that health. There won't be any suffering involved in it. This gets back to the illusionary belief in separate parts that are seen as wholes. This belief is very deep. Bodies and every separate thing in the world that has a made-up purpose is an illusion of a whole. This goes beyond the metaphor of even a body being healed. And you will recognize and practice well by this. The body should not feel at all. If you have been successful, then there will be no sense of feeling ill or feeling well, of pain or pleasure. No response at all is in the mind to what the body does. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 17 End of Section